Happy New Year and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 177 we'll take a look at logical architectures and what a logical architecture component really is. Uh, you can get a listing of all of the lessons I do as well as groupings of those lessons uh, through my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. When we look at a typical architecture, we typically draw lines and boxes to kind of represent how that system is going to work. And this is essentially called a logical architecture. You know, it's very similar to the floor plan of a house. If we look at this floor plan of different kitchens and bathrooms, we can start to actually identify various building blocks, uh, various parts or components of this particular floor plan. Uh, we have kitchens and bathrooms and bedrooms and office, some stairwell. But the point is that these rooms all have a specific purpose and kind of form the building blocks of that house. And depending on the structure, of the exterior of that house, um, we can sometimes rearrange some of these rooms to kind of form the overall structure or the architecture of that house. Well, by the same token, these rooms are building blocks of that floor plan. Very similar to how architectural components are the building blocks of any given system. You see, these are architecture components. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this particular lesson is because the term component is very overloaded in our industry. Sometimes it could mean a class file. Other times it means uh, a subdomain. Um, here, I'm describing an architecture component as a building block, something the system does. And these building blocks combine to form any given monolithic or single deployment type of architecture, or uh, these building blocks can be used to create services. Now, notice here, and this is a very important point I wanted to make in this video, that notice that, I'm getting my drawing tool here, <laughs> that it's not always a one-to-one. -one. Different architecture styles um, support different uh, types of granularity or size of a service. And notice here the order service includes three components. Inventory management is only a single component, whereas the payment service is two. So it's not necessarily always a one-to-one -one with an architecture component and a corresponding service in a distributed architecture. The bottom line is that logical architectural components are the building blocks of any software architecture and any software system. So we spend a lot of time as software architects creating logical architectures, uh, thinking about these building blocks and how they interconnect and the coupling between these. And then we go to implement it. So if we rearrange some of these building blocks, we can see that we can start grouping these into domains. This is our ordering domain, and this is our processing domain. So be able to place an order and then process that particular order. What does this look like in a system? It turns out that in most programming languages, it can be realized through the namespace or directory structure of that system. The way the source code is organized reflects that logical architecture, the structure of that system or that service. Um, for example, uh, the higher level directory nodes really designate that domain or subdomain in which those components are grouped within. For example, here we have ordering going to an ordering directory or namespace structure and the processing components under 
a directory node or namespace called processing. Well, it turns out that the leaf nodes of our directory structures or namespaces represent those logical components. And if we think about this, it makes perfect, well, I'm going to do a pun, logical sense. Uh, in other words, um, why do we group all these class files under payment right here? Well, because, Mark, they all have to do with payment processing. That is an architectural component, a building block of the system, because this does one thing in the system. It manages all the payment processing for different payment types, and all that code resides in here. And so this makes a logical connection when we start to try to realize a logical architecture or the structure of our software once we go into implementation. And as a matter of fact, uh, let me really cement that concept here by showing you an example. And let's do payment again. I like the payment processing. So let's write a class file, creditcard.java. Now I'll just use Java here as an example. I notice we have a package, orderentry.ordering.payment. That could be a namespace. We have a class credit card, public void charge card, which accepts a payment object. Well, this is a piece of source code. It is a class file. It's a source file that has to reside somewhere. And sure enough, we put it in this directory structure right here under payment. Now, it turns out that our logical architecture has payment processing, which is realized or manifested through that same directory structure, which means that creditcard.java is part of or implementing the payment processing logical component. And so this payment node right here actually does represent our logical architecture components. So the way we structure our source code, our namespaces, our directories, our package structures, reflects that logical architecture and vice versa. And so the point here is that a logical architecture is necessary and it's different than a physical architecture, but is necessary to be able to form the structure, the architecture of our systems. So this has been lesson 177, logical architecture components. I'm going to be doing a lot of a lot more lessons in components, how to identify them, coupling, and we'll take a look at other aspects of these. But this was a good way to kind of start uh, those other lessons by really showing you and defining oh, what I mean by an architectural component. Um, so anyways, thank you so much for listening. Happy New Year, and stay tuned in two more weeks for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday.